Prof uh, Professor Casey, please. Now, Professor Casey, ladies and gentlemen, is the Professor of Clinical Psychiatry at University College Dublin, and she practices at the Marsha Hospital. She has wide experience in the psychiatric field, qualifying in the 1970s. And she did her postgraduate work in Nottingham and in Edinburgh with a study by the Medical Research Council, or what's called the MRC in the United Kingdom, on suicide and threatened suicide. Now, Dr. Casey, or Professor Casey, were you involved in the 1983 amendment at any stage? No, I was out of the country at the you time doing my postgraduate training. But you're fully familiar with the 1983 uh, amendment? Very familiar with it, yes. And what is your stated position on uh, the current amendment? My stated position on the current amendment is that I see it very much as a pro-life amendment. I do not see it as advancing the cause of abor abortion or giving comfort to those who believe in abortion. And as a committed pro-life person, I fully support it. Are you familiar with the decision of the Supreme Court in the X case? Yes, I am. And do you know that in the X case, the Supreme Court held that suicide or an imminent threat of suicide would be an acceptable ground? Do you agree with that as a ground for a termination of pregnancy? I strongly disagree with that. And would you tell us why? I disagree on a number of counts. Firstly, the epidemiological evidence, the evidence from studies that have looked at suicide in pregnancy and compared suicide um, in, in pregnant women with non-pregnant women all point to the very, very low risk of suicide in pregnancy. Pregnancy seems to have a protective effect against suicide. Can you tell us from the studies whether, whether there are any specific results as to the likelihood of suicide in a pregnant mother as opposed to suicide in other mothers? A study in 19, published in 1991 in the British Medical Journal found that pregnant women had 1 20th the risk of suicide when compared with non-pregnant women. In other words, they, they were 1 20th less likely to commit suicide than pregnant women. A study published in 1978 looking at um, 12 years earlier found an even lower risk of 1 25th the risk. And have you any views as to why this risk is so low? W one, could, one could speculate. Um, one of the possibilities is that motherhood itself confers a protective effect on women, that women who, who find themselves pregnant want to protect and want to nurture and want to cherish. Um, that would be a psychological explanation. A, a biological explanation could well be that, that women who are pregnant tend to be in, in, in contact with their doctors very frequently, and therefore when they do develop emotional disorders, they're diagnosed and treated during pregnancy, and so that reduces the potential for committing suicide. So you would be against the inclusion of suicide as a possible grounds for the termination of a pregnancy? Absolutely. Now, the amendment which we have seen on the screen also concentrates or uh, restricts the threat to the life of the mother as opposed to the health of the mother. Um, now, can you assist us at all in your views or the views of other authorities on what is meant by the health of the mother? Well, that's a great difficulty because contrary to what the general public think, there is no definition, there is no single definition of what constitutes health. There is even no De, um, definition of what constitutes illness. So given that, that there are no definitions, um, over the years physicians, doctors have attempted to build up ways of measuring health and they have developed what are called quality of life measures. And quality of life measures measure a conglomeration of symptoms, of psychological distress accruing from an illness, and how all of that affects interactions with other people. And these are called quality of life measures. But because it's so complex, there are about 130 of them available at the moment. So people who have tended to look to them for guidance in deciding what constitutes good health, say, after recovery from an illness, don't find answers, um, giving, giving different 
quality of life schedules to one patient can actually lead to different results. So the whole area is, is very much in flux and very fluid. Yeah. Well, from your stated pro-life view, um, do you have an opinion as to whether or not you would be prepared to include the health of the mother as opposed to the life of the mother as a ground for terminating pregnancy? No, I would not. And the reason I would not, and the reason that I believe um, it was right that the distinction should be made between health and life is because it may well be interpreted in the future that life means quality of life, not just physical life as, as, as we know, know it to be. It may be interpreted more broadly, and of course that would lead to very widespread abortion. Thank you. Go on here, Mr. McElroy. Mr. McElroy. <coughs> Yes. Um, Dr. Casey, have you ever been wrong in a medical diagnosis? I have no proof that I have been wrong. I don't know, but I suppose I have. I'm marching the same as everybody else. Could you be wrong in your view that the people of Ireland should vote for this amendment? No, I don't think I am wrong in that. Do you agree with your colleague, Professor Bonner, that there is a need for legislation in this area? I think before we proceed to legislation, um, the, the Medical Council will need to specify very clearly its guidelines. I'll ask you again, Doctor. Do you agree with your colleague, Professor Bonner, that there is a need for legislation in this area? I think there probably is, but I'm not certain. It depends on the Medical Council guidelines and how, how they are observed by doctors over the coming years. Doesn't that put you in an impossible professional position, doctor? Because the government have put a white paper in the door of every person in this country which says there will be no legislation if they vote for this amendment. Well, my understanding and my reading of that, and it only arrived yesterday morning, is the government say that at present or at this stage, now, by inserting the words at this stage, that suggests to me that the government might actually, if necessary, consider legislation. I think, Doctor, that only doctors and lawyers live in ivory towers, and that the government have said that if this amendment is voted down, there will in fact be legislation. Isn't that correct? Yes. So you agree with your colleague, Professor Bonner, that with the assistance of the Medical Council when they lay out guidelines, there would be a need for legislation? There may be a need for legislation. So do you make a distinction between yourself and Professor Bonner? He feels that there should be legislation and you feel that there might be a need for legislation? Yes, I suppose there is a, a distinction, yes. So even among the two government witnesses, we have a disagreement on that point? They're not government witnesses. I do not care for the government. The proponents of the amendment. Now I think, Dr Casey, you expressed your views on this amendment in the Irish Medical Times in October of this year, isn't that correct? Yes. I think you said to your medical colleagues in a distinguished medical publication that nothing less than an amendment to the Constitution would be satisfactory. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me, doctor, what difference does it make either to a doctor or a patient whether the law is contained in legislation or in a Constitution? It makes the difference in this context in that the only way the suicide um, element could, could have been removed would have been by a constitutional amendment. Don't you acknowledge in your article in the Irish Medical Times that trying to put concepts of this type into the Constitution is extremely difficult? Well, the Constitution contains many extremely difficult concepts. For example, it does contain concepts about the office of the president. Yes. It contains difficult concepts about rights of individual citizens, like rights, general rights to life, rights to property, rights to, to join trade unions. And all of those issues relating to personal liberty are contained within the Constitution. I don't see, therefore, why um, a, a, an ideal such as protecting the life of the unborn and all that that implies should be any more complex Tell than, me, doctor, than other rights. Where in the Constitution is the definition of the word health? I don't know that the Constitution has a definition of the word health since doctors don't have a definition of the word health. And where ultimately will the definition of health be decided, doctor? 
what this amendment is saying is that the definition that is important is the definition of physical life. And I don't think there's any difficult, the doctors have any difficulty in deciding on issues of physical life and death. Particularly gynaecologists don't have any difficulties. Now, doctor, we're not playing cat and mouse. You know and I know that the word health is in this amendment. Isn't that correct? As an exclusion. Yes. And there is no definition, legal or medical, of the word health. Isn't that correct? But there is quite a clear concept of what life, what constitutes physical life. And doctors, that... doctors have operated with that definition of life for many years. Gynaecologists um, have very clear concepts of what constitutes life. Indeed, people who are in their graves, I'm quite sure if they were with us now, would have a very clear concept of what constituted life as distinct from death. And won't the concept of health be de debated in medical common rooms and in courts of law into the future? Isn't that where it's going to be debated? It would have been debated had it been excluded. Because it has been excluded, it is quite obvious that this amendment is aiming to save women's lives. It is about life, which is a very clear concept. At least it is to me. Doctor, I think at the conclusion of your article in the Irish Medical Times, you ask the people of Ireland to adhere to the principle that all men are equal. Isn't it the case that women get a shoddy deal under this amendment? You've quoted that out of context. That was a quote from Thomas Jefferson when he, at a time when abortion was legal in the United States, and it was a landmark quotation because at that time he was saying that all persons were created equal. Isn't it a fact, Doctor, that this amendment is specifically identified for and only affects women? And I'm a woman advocating it. And you feel the need for legislation, possibly, and your colleague, Dr. Bonner, feels that legislation is necessary. Isn't that correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you. This is very much.